Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Arnold Schmidt and I welcome you to another standard video here with me. We're playing Demir Fairies. Yes, some of you have might have already watched the video that I did on this deck, but I did it in best of one early access. So I wanted to revisit the archetype for best of three, tune the list a little bit and see if it can actually compete in best of three and be a competitive deck. Is it tier one? Is it tier two? Is it tier three? Who knows? That is the question of this video. And yeah, again, I took footage from my Twitch and I will showcase that to you. Uh, there's some exciting games in there. And um, yeah, quickly, one update from the list um, that I played in early access. It's a little picklock prankster. I think this sort of hits the nail on what you want to be doing. You always want to hold up counter spells, right? And then when your opponent does not play into your counter spells, you can just activate that free the Fey adventure mill the top four of your deck get a fairy often or an instant sorcery if you're looking for a counter spell a removal spell sort of helps you select um in that regard in certain matches where you're looking really for counter spells this gives you more counter spells if you're looking to kill a thing this gives you more kill spells and then on top of that you get a little one free flying vigilance body which isn't all that amazing yeah but it is a fairy so it will enable all your things and make them better and, uh, you know, attack into Kaito, and especially as a defensive body, if you're playing it's a moderate aggro deck, this, this might just stop a 2-2 creatures uh, in their tracks, or, you know, against soldiers or humans, it brick walls, they're 1-1s, one -ones. so uh, I wanted to try this, and I think it's kind of decent. Yeah, Talion is gone, Shieldred is just a better card, um, it is how it is, you know, as long as Shieldred is in a format, you know, you, you won't, <laughs> it will be difficult to play any other 4-drop in black uh, over you know, good old Shadred. Um, the rest of the deck pretty straightforward, I'd say. Uh, I think Obira is fine, but Legendary is a bit of a downside. If you if if she wouldn't be Legendary, you'd probably play four of it. Um, I mean, it does add up in multiples, uh, especially if you have two of them out. That's probably why they made it Legendary. It's a bit, bit nasty if it's in multiples. Um, yeah, and Kaito, of course. Uh, the card advantage engine of choice. There's one more card, Invasion of Amonkhet, that I think could be quite good in this archetype. Um... I haven't done a try yet, but it's something that maybe if you are into this deck, should try out. Oh, just a suggestion. Sideboards, we're looking at, uh, you know, the, the usual stuff. Cut down, and it's of course, and in addition to Fairy Fancy, we already have one removal spell, but two more cannot hurt against the aggressive decks. So I'm listening to Luch against the white aggro decks. Counter spells, more of those. Picklock Pranks, there's sort of in that grindy slot, but it's it's a very flexible card. Again, it, it doesn't like outshine every anything, right? But it's I think it's a good role filler. I can bring it in against anybody who's aggressive to be because like when you're when you're playing against someone aggressive, you do have to prolong the game a little bit. You have to kill their stuff. This is not a deck where you can just easily race them, right? And like Demia Rogues of the past, um you could just race some of the decks. But here you really have to kind of assume the control role which you're pretty okay at with fairy fencing and so on and then picklock pranks is just kind of the perfect card and also quite useful against a control opponent where hey you can have that two mana card adventure effect and also later on the one free body and sort of poke at them <laughs> poke them to death um annoying affliction is just uh you know two mana black removal that exiles which is important against for example fawnwood moss uh, what's it called mosswood dread knight i believe not formwood that's something else uh and of course tenacious underdog and so on just you know good for exactly that and then go for the throat again more spot removal against you know various creature decks childreds whatever you want to kill uh for children for the aggro matchups and then down here at the end, which is a card I'm a bit, of, I'm a bit conflicted about. Um, I think it has some use cases, but uh, I, yeah, I think it's just a little overhyped. And you see some lists from other creators or players um, who run this more in the main deck or what have you. But I just, I haven't really, um, yeah. I put one sideboard very conservatively and uh, I think that is sort of where it belongs. And maybe there's not even supposed to be any copies of it. But yeah, maybe that's a bit harsh on the card. The card is maybe not that bad. All right. In any case, I think I've done enough talking. Enjoy some more fairies gameplay. Let me know in the comments. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed some sort of uh, cool card that you can try out in this archetype. Um, happy to have a discussion. And yeah, enjoy the gameplay. She continues to be bad. I mind. I'm not playing words now. 
Maybe you also need 24 lands. Just having a bunch of... Okay. It's tempting to counter something that has two sides to it. Being on the draw, missing a land drop with a deck like this is just... I mean, it was always... It's always bad. But it's pretty bad with this deck. Kind of losing. Kind of losing it here. So a deck like Fairies cannot let these things resolve, right? Like, maybe, maybe I'm going to realize very quickly that this Fairies deck is just a joke and not something to be taken serious. Because like there's there's cards in standard that are just really really good, like vetting announcement. So if that ever slips through, like the nice thing about rogues was that rogues could certainly raise people. I'm not so sure about this deck. Like sleep cut fairy doesn't attack until very late, and this this thing deals a little damage. This deals a little damage. Two two damage. The dream thief deals one. It's not that much damage. You're playing against the variant of Esper midrange, I assume. Or just a grindy affair, I would think. Hey, thank you for the tier one sub. God, I don't even know how to spell your name. J Mest Dark? Dark? Day? I don't know. Tell me. Anyways, thanks for the support. Appreciate that. Could Rafine actually help fairies? Hmm. That's a good point. I mean, Rafine is a pretty messed up card. That I could see. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But then again, like, why are you even playing fairies at that point, I guess? Why are you just playing Esper? Is it discards? Yeah. Um, Why not Invasion of Amonkhet and Forager? Forager is bad. Played with it. It felt really bad. Um, invasion I haven't tried yet. Forager is... I mean, I haven't really played with Pricklock, but Forager is bad. It doesn't have enough targets. It's clunky. It's, just, it's like a clunky, expensive card, really. It's not good. It, it might be a sideboard card, maybe. Like, Well, yeah, your power, <laughs> just power, you know, just power over there. Look, like pranks are actually pretty good here. A Halo Forager would be horrendous. I can actually keep up my counter spell while, you know, doing something. Yeah, I, I know what Halo Furniture does with Ego Drain and Fencing, thank you for explaining. It's still bad. Maybe like a sideboard card. It's not really what you want to be doing, you don't want to tap out. And then if you don't have any of those in your graveyard, really bad. And there's ways people exile cards from graveyard too, so... I might be winning this game. Opponent doesn't even want to attack anymore.
Man, this thing is slow. <laughs> oh, it's a low mana investment, though. Think about it that way, I guess. My side of the board is very sleepy. Yeah. Not anymore. One has, one has woken up already. Oh well, oh well. We're gonna attack Thunderdark. Go to 11. Forager plus invasion is a combo, yeah, I guess. If you play both, then Forager makes more sense. I give you that much. Mm. I'm just draw cards. Maybe I should've left and keep the land in hand. But also, I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at the like, Wandering Emperor doesn't kill this. Go for the throat needs four mana to kill the, the the fairy. When you get it online, it's pretty strong. And you have like cheap mana leak, fencing. I mean they they really pushed it to be constructive playable. This deck would probably be really good if you still had that old standard rotation, right? Where um, where you actually yeah have less cards in the format, and then a deck like this might actually be really good. I think there's no way out for my opponent. I don't even have to have this card in my hand. There's just no way out. What they needed to do. I think. Yeah, they messed up. They needed to do Emperor and plus and then they kill one of my guys. And hope that I have zero cards in that, basically. Like, nothing of importance. Then they would have killed one and go up to seven. Yeah. Oh, well. Um... Maybe I want spell piece, huh? Ego drain seems weird. Maybe it's maybe that's the, the bad card because like it's not a tempo spell. You really rely on tempo. Cut down. Cut down is good against Rafine. Defensing is costs you two mana to kill Rafine with a fairy in play. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I don't have that type of effect, why not? Not looking for something specific, my hand is great. Cutting down my fairy, we do resting. The fairy Ludo is a better card. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. I haven't played with it yet, but it just reads so medium. Let's cut down. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the fairy's deck. Cut down is just legal. It's one mana kill any of your guys. 
Right, Kaito, you need to do some work here. Very Luda only copies from your graveyard, right? At instant speed though, doesn't it? It does copy at instant speed, I think. I hope. It doesn't, then it's just truly unplayable. Uh, attack for one. One seems to have some sort of removal. Oh, you can only activate it as sorcery? Okay. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. No. Hmm. You have a last spell in hand. There's no secret I can't uncover. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Okay. Rue card in a in a low resource game. Not the greatest move I have ever done. Oh, they have the land. Totally blanked on that. This land is kind of bad. I don't like this land. I'm just gonna time walk them here. I'm not gonna attack. I think they probably just wanna kill this, but that ain't happening. Oh, plaza. Cute. Huh. Could go for the throw. They're probably gonna protect. And then I just cut down. If I cut down first, they know about the go for the throat, so. It's a bit risky. Like, if they have shielded, I'm gonna be in a world of hurt. But I think if they had shielded, they would have protected her. They would have played her last turn, I was tapped out. It's a pretty good tempo swing. Like the Manland cannot take out my Kaito because it only has one power. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, this card definitely seems good. I saw some fairies list without it. I think that's wrong. I think this card is. I need to play that. Okay. Could respond with pranks. Yeah, that's probably correct to do so actually. Chain the prankster. Um, yeah, I feel like I just killed this. I have prankster and Kaito. I should be able to find another removal. And we beat Esper midrange? Is this deck real? Is it the real deal? In 20, 30, 40, uh, you would need more data. Like... To, to really know if, if, if a mana base change like that would do something. Okay, we're down to five. Um, could do like this. We could do this. Or maybe this. Hi, Trispy. Uh, 
Ah, oh, the mirror match. And I'm on five and they are seven, plus one more because they've been on a draw. Hmm. Chad, what do you think? Who's going to win this game? The guy without any cards? Or the other guy with a bunch of cards? Snooze fest. Everybody's snoozing. Okay. Uh, Obira. Doesn't seem all that threatening. You think Blue Black Fairy is a trap? I don't know. Probably. And by trap, you mean bad deck? Or not, not great enough for standard? Yeah, probably. <laughs> they can fencing my fairy? No? What you got? Show me, show me, show me. do fencing I think the fairy is pretty good so I'm gonna choose to counter that and I also have ego drain for the hand Ugh. <laughs> oh shit all right <laughs> I guess I should have just let my fairy die I mean this is pretty loaded. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, yeah, I don't know. If I would have known, I wouldn't have done what I did, but the like the fairy's deck doesn't play a whole lot of four drops this might just be like they might be playing one shield red two talions or whatever and they have both of them in their hand they also have halo forager this is a bit of a clunky version of the deck i mean no matter what four drop they play Just have to hope they don't draw off an end, I think. No. Okay, now I have to draw a removal. That was not a removal. <clears throat> Double go for the throat. What do I think about Mono Blue in standard? Maybe good enough, yeah. It wasn't... It wasn't, like, that far off of being good enough uh, with Fable around. But yeah, one issue of the deck is the prevalence of black. Like, the Demir midrange stuff, I think, is pretty good against Mono Blue, unfortunately. Although, I haven't really tried it in a while. Just, like, Liliana of the Veil is a beating.
It's a pity. It's a pity. Paris could have been so good. But no. They just wanted to make the standard rotation later. It was never meant to be for Ferris in the end. Hmm. Better than a random card. It's kind of redundant. Ooh, that's a good card. I like that one. I'm just gonna tap out here. Although maybe that was bad. Maybe that was bad. Yeah. It's like, I kind of want them to counter my card. <laughs> so I have a, actually a really good card in my hand. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, what are you gonna do? Ah, oh, you're playing in a bear off. Should let my thief go for the Kaito. Maybe that's worth. Although now if they have a Kaito, that wouldn't be great. Yeah, I have the Mastermind in play, so I would actually draw a card if they wanted to draw a card with Kaito. Or Invasion of Amonkhet. Yeah, maybe you need the Invasion of Amonkhet, huh? Maybe that's the better one. It's like, that actually helps you turn the corner significantly. Yeah. Maybe this was too hasty. Maybe I should have waited until... I don't think they will ever... Nah, actually, if they draw land, they might go untap and then attack this. No, they, they won't. Like, if they draw la blue land, they could go... With a counter spell in hand, could go untap, attack Kaito with both. Thinking that I would die, then I cut down, then they counter spell back. Then I counter spell back, and I'm, I'm like, in a good spot. Oh, I'm missing land drops. Convenient. For me. <laughs> uh, kind of like all the cards in my hand. Yeah, I'm well, not gonna not plus it. Go for the throat. Five cards over there. I think I want to keep the Mirax. Hmm. I think that cut doesn't matter. Hmm. 
nothing. I could have untapped that no, but then they could have killed it. I didn't want it to die. Actually. Doing this now. They can't counter me and I can't counter back. Oh, I hit a green thief. Awesome. <clears throat> what do you guys think about the prankster so far? Is it reasonable? Prankster. Prankster into prankster and milling these. Easy, easy card advantage victory here. And they want a flashback, like a go for the throat or whatever. Nope. Nope. That ain't happening. Okay. Two cards left. I could kill this or I could prankster. Just for science, I, I'm pretty sure my guy is the die still here. Yeah. With Ego Drain, it doesn't work like that. It's weird. But yeah. It's like your defenses are not even there. <laughs> the chain. Value is mine. I mean, I feel like the prankster is kind of winning here in the face off against Forager. Has gone a spell. Nice. Yeah, ego drain seems kind of bad. <clears throat> Deck seems so bad outside of limited. I don't think it's like that terrible. I think it's maybe solidly tier two, sort of like that that type of deck. Bit early to say. It's also various ways you can tune it and build it differently. Like you could play four invasion of Amoncad. It's like a worse version of Rogue. The Prankster and the Forager actually, like if you play Prankster, Forager and 
invasion, you have a lot of mill, so your forager is going to be online a lot. That could work. Could play a couple of foragers, maybe. But then Kaito is also just a nice card. I guess you can just play both. It's the worst version of rogues. It's different. I mean, Drown in the Lock is a pretty messed up card, yeah. Fencing is really good. Spell Stutter is not bad either. Oh, all right, I'm playing the mirror match. God, I, I zoned out for a second. I was like, what? I was playing in someone random. I'm playing the mirror match, I might not want to put back the prankster there. What's my favorite standard deck so far? Uh, favorite to play, certainly Esper Control. Um, in terms of power level, maybe Esper Midrange. Seems, seems very strong. Trespasser. How about no? Yeah, maybe invasion is just better. It also has various synergies with maybe if your opponent has actually really good creatures in their deck, you can get them back. I can kill my poor ninja. Deny me the card. Have you seen a Bramble Familiar reanimate deck? Yeah, I have. I, I just played for it for like two hours. You can watch the VOD. Like TLDR, it's a it's a very powerful deck, but as soon as you um, know its weaknesses, which are mainly counter spells, you can I think you can beat it pretty easily. Uh, I don't have I don't have nothing um, in terms of answers for another like shield root or whatever. But I have the better board position as soon as my opponent like if I if I if I let the fairy live, they just kill my Kaito and then we're like sort of even even. That's not not great either. So could take a little bit of a gamble there and hope they don't have the shield root. Yikes. Yikes. Play this land, the place better around um, mana mana thingy. Mana leak. The king of rogues trying to make fairies work in standard. Hey. You name it. Could also make him a Rex token. I guess. Prankster! Both swing. Hmm. Prankster!
Don't even have a fairy to play right now. They could actually, uh, if they have land, then untap fairy, attack both on Kaido, they could get me a little bit. If they also have counter spell to protect their ninja. Counter spell. It's time. Just give up. Okay. That's game. Ooh, okay. Uh, if, if you don't have a fairy, this card becomes pretty bad. Hopeless nightmare, sure. And there's the fairy. Oh, I played the wrong land. So this is some sort of maybe braids. Braids is good with permanence, right? Killed the blood type, I guess. I'm just going for the fraud. So like all these decks, I'm just thinking like if I play, this card is pretty good against Esper control, I guess. If I play Esper mid range, just like all this stuff probably doesn't matter. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh shit, I forgot to draw a card first. Oops. Not going for phase. When I'm at five against two of Nixes, also interesting. Crumbles. 
Really thought I was in trouble, but I guess I'm not. Uh, the fencing was, was quite good, and them basically not using their fourth turn also helped. Oh no, they have Pylon, jeez. I just took that out of your hand. And I got mega punished for not playing like the Takenuma first and then having Spellpierce up. Well, that was, there goes my plan to win this game. That was brutal. That was absolutely brutal. Hmm. Now I'm in trouble. That doesn't help. Nope. Defy me, and you lose everything. Loses two. Uh, okay. Yeah, if if they choose to sack the artifact, I'm dead. Probably they will choose so. Raids. The top deck pylon was that was that was the nail in the coffin. Uh, and maybe me not playing the fairy mastermind instead of the monster also cost me. They make this appear could be better than Stutter because it's good against Omnixilus being copied. Now we have a spot where the marsh is actually shit. We are supposed to just play both fairies there. <laughs> Mix this again. Looks like it. I've conquered the entire plane. <laughs> One you work for me now, runt. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. <laughs> <clears throat> the slow burn. Could have discarded the Dream Thief, I suppose.
Yeah, maybe messed up on turn two. Should have just played both fairies, probably. Yeah. Give us seven. One damage doesn't matter. I think I'm happy trading for one one. They, like I'm just thinking if they kill the shield right here. They have various ways to kill shield right actually. And they probably still have a pylon right because they haven't used any removal. Maybe I'm not supposed to play shield right there. Just wait until they use removal on my fairies. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Fix the line. I mean, Amerix or Amerix 6, your name's hard to spell. It's for a cheap investment of one mana, right? Like, you have to always keep that in mind. Of course, it's it's slow. But for a card like this, I guess you would pay at least three mana. Then it enables all your spells, right? It enables this, it enables Ego Drain and Defensing, so... I think this is just a liability of a creature here because of the, the devil. Okay, so they're gonna go braids. And then throw, throw an artifact at me. I have six, seven, nine damage. Good. I died to Obnixidus now, I'm realizing. I fucked up. I was not I was not meant to play that because I have two I have three blockers. Oh uh, now I died to Obnixilis. Oh, that was really bad. Can't believe how stupid that was. I was like, yeah, why not just play my creatures, have more blockers, attack us, whatever. Okay, so die to that. Okay, red black, not the best matchup for fairies. Red black, Obnixilis, sacrifice shenanigans. 